Welcome back to the TD Ameritrade Network. As we talked about crude under pressure again, I want to revisit that topic with Mr. Bob Iaccino, the founder, chief strategist at Path Trading Partners. Bob, uh, I want to talk some currencies with you, but let's hit oil first because market doesn't seem to care about a pretty big draw. Is that the right move? Right. Well, to a certain degree it is because the OPEC meeting is all that matters in the ultra short term. You know, we've talked about this quite a bit, um, Oliver. I, I mentioned that we had six weeks in a row. Last time I was on with you, it was yep. just this week. Six weeks in a row of increased refinery utilization, right? So what was that going to lead to short term demand? What do we get? 7.3 million barrel draw. Uh, the refinery utilization is sort of the canary in the coal mine in the short term for the front month for those kinds of situations. That mm. has been a very consistent indicator in the ultra short term. However, we remain 6% above the five year average for this time la or for the, this time of year. And with the building gasoline, we're 4% above the five year average for this time of year for gasoline. So the OPEC meeting still matters and the stresses of having them push the press conference, uh, I mean, cancel it, I assume it's pushed to tomorrow yeah. until the Russian delegation arrives, shows the kind of discord within the uh, highly weakened OPEC. Yeah, all right, uh, Bob, uh, love the take. Let's talk some dollar action though. Let's talk a little bit of uh, what's happening on the currency front. Dollar under pressure. Uh, we talked going into the G20 thing that if there was some big you know, development on the tariff front, you were here uh, as we discussed this, that maybe some of that, you know, tariff bid and mm -hmm. dollar would come out. But I'm, I want to be very careful to tie anything related to trade and tariffs because that situation is a mess, man. <laughs> it's really a mess. You know, I'm glad I'm talking to you today because something I've been saying Me today too, to anyone who will listen is I can't imagine the arrest of the Huawei CEF, CFO is not known by somebody or was not discussed. <laughs> Now, there was one tweet I saw earlier in the day, and I, I wish I could remember who tweeted it, but they said that a lot of things go on in government, and the presidents don't necessarily what's ha understand or know yeah, what's yeah, happening I know, I saw it too, each yeah. time. But I can't imagine, can't imagine such a high-profile arrest in Canada. Uh, number two, it's showing increased cooperation between the U.S. and Canada, which is an overall positive thing. But I can't imagine this wasn't known, and that the rhetoric that's coming out of China is probably... Uh, acceptable and was pre-planned and maybe even pre-noticed. So having said all that, the amount of probability of the December rate hike that's come out is probably overdone. We've got non-farm payrolls coming out. Uh, I don't know what they're going to say. Uh, we had a Fed governor today, I can't remember who it was because there's been so much going on, yep. saying we're within a whisper of the neutral rate. Uh, is a whisper 25 more basis points two weeks from now? Probably. So I imagine that rate hike is still going to happen, but certainly I expect prior to the blackout period some actual comments to the negative on this December rate hike if it's not going to happen. Yeah, you know, uh, it's so fascinating because uh, there is now this follow on to what was a you know, shift in the language by Fed uh, Chair Powell that's been echoed by some of the other Fed governors who even before that were a little bit more on the dovish side. But does it, again, does it make sense, Bob? Because we were just talking about with Tom, there hasn't been some giant miss of data, okay? The jobless claims have started to climb a little bit, but many people ex expected that to happen. And then you have everything else on the ISM side this week good, other than housing and a few uh, blips here and there. Why is everybody now so fearful? Well, there's a couple of things. I think, number one, this idea that Powell flipped on a dime in his opinion is a little silly because Fed chairmen, uh, Fed governors regularly don't just call the media and say, by the way, we've changed our minds. There are scheduled speeches or scheduled appearances. These are where they make these proclamations. Otherwise, they kind of stay quiet. So we hadn't seen Powell for a few weeks uh, prior to the speech where people said he was dovish and then prior to the New York Economic Club speech. And we haven't really, uh, he just hasn't had a planned speech. So it's not necessarily a flip on the dime. That's number one. Number two, the market had assumed the Fed was on a quarterly rate hike cycle. If you include December of last year, okay, quarterly. But if you don't, it was three hikes this year. 
that's, I mean, shouldn't we at least have a full calendar year before we call it a quarterly cycle? I'm not making excuses. I think December's done. That makes a quarterly cycle to me, at least for this year. Yeah. But for them to flip in 2019 doesn't seem that unusual to me. Um, I'll mm -hmm. admit I wasn't expecting it necessarily. I'm the one looking for, or I was looking for, 3.5% tenure by the end of the year. Clearly, I'm going to be wrong on that. I said that multiple times on your show, and I'm happy to say I'm dead wrong about that. Uh, but I'm not necessarily happy to say it because <laughs> I would have liked to have seen it because that meant the economy was rolling along and that equities were probably quite a bit higher. Yeah. All right, Bob, good stuff. We're going to continue the conversation shortly.